starting with a canvas that has been grounded or underpainted with a warm tone, in this case a mixture of cadmium yellow medium and napal crimson. After that's completely dry, I sketch my design with a pencil or charcoal directly onto the canvas. Using a black and white image of your reference photo can help you see the values better. That's how light or dark your color should be. Okay, I have my reference photo here. I also have it on my monitor close by. The way my printer prints color, it made it a lot darker here. So I'm going to lighten this up a bit on my monitor. It looks a bit lighter, so I'm going to be matching on my monitor versus here. So use what works for you. In landscapes, I work from top to bottom mostly. Sometimes I change it up, but for the most part, I work from top to bottom. I'm going to start with my largest brush, my three-quarter flat, and I'm going to go ahead and go into a little bit of ultramarine blue and white and mix that up. And I'm going to start with the darkest color in my background, in my sky, and then move up to the lightest color in the sky and then move on down from there. So each time I'm doing a different area, I'm going from dark to light, dark to light, all those values. Values is how light or dark a color is. So on these small ones, I like to pick it up and really move it around. I purposefully painted that underpainting to show a little of the orange in the background. So I'm gonna leave some of that show. It just warms up the picture. Going right over the cloud area that I've blocked out. I'm using a lot of paint, you can hear it on the, the canvas. Just a little bit. Uh, acrylic a lot of times is about layering. So the more you layer, the more depth you get, especially in these landscapes. Each layer it just makes the painting look deeper and deeper and deeper. Okay, that's my first color blue. Put that all in there. Now I'm doing my own thing, but I am referring to the photo. No two skies have ever been the same. So this is a place where it's not critical to get it exactly like the picture. Just do like you like. Right down in here with the bushes. I like that warm orange peeking through, so I'm letting it peek through. I'm not laying a lot of paint on it. It's not real thick at this point. You can hear it. As needed, I use a little bit of water. Okay. Over, it's brighter over here, so I'm going to leave that there. I'm also going to just dip in a little bit to a little bit of yellow. Put that in a little bit. darker cloud there so I'm putting that in with just a little corner of the color mixing wet on wet. There's a little darker area here too so I'm just grabbing a little of that ultramarine blue and putting that in there with the corner of the brush. I want to keep it painterly. This is a painting so having paint strokes show is beautiful. This particular set doesn't come with cerulean but if you have cerulean pop it in some cerulean would be pretty too. Okay, now I'm moving up in value, so I'm just grabbing a little white. That's going to bring me to a medium value, at least the medium for this background. And that's where I'm going to add these clouds. So I need quite a bit of paint here. And I'll set it down. I'm going to really work the brush in here on the corner. Just going to work it in. Circular stroke is working it into the darker colors in the back. Now to add depth to my painting, I'm also making certain that the clouds at the top are larger than the clouds on the bottom. That will pull the viewer back into the painting. Load it up again, going right off the canvas. I like to paint all the way around because when I frame it, it just gives me more options. So if I decide that the sides are gonna show in my framing option, then I don't have to worry about painting the sides later. It's a lot easier to do it now than later.
so that's my medium. Now I'm going to go in and just white, lighten it up a bit more even. And I'm going to do the middle section of the clouds to make them poofier looking. So these are probably cumulus clouds. And letting it be very painterly. can see there's still some orange peeking through and I think that's really pretty. I don't necessarily see it in my picture, but I do like that warmth that that background gives me. And that'll just, that color will be repeated all throughout. And so it gives it a continuity that's just, I think, really pretty. It's hard to get it painted around the sides, but it's worth it if you decide to float frame it. When you float frame the the canvas is floating inside the frame and the sides show a little bit. So it's important to get those sides finished and looking like the design goes all the way around. It does take a little bit more time, but I, I really do think it's worth it. You can see I'm getting very loose with it. All right, let's add in a little bit lighter, brighter white. This is going to be our highlight. So I started with my darks, quite a few mediums, and now this is going to be my lightest color. Now, if for some reason it blends in too much because we are doing wet on wet, we can always come back and revisit this and put in more color. If you don't like it as painterly as I'm doing it, just work with it more while it's wet, blend more, and it will be softer. The other thing you could do is add a retardant a product that you can get at Michaels or anywhere else that actually slows the drying time of acrylics to make them work a little bit more like oils. Oils dry so slowly that you have a lot of time to blend, so it's a lot easier to blend with oils. Acrylics, you can get the same looks, you just have to either work very, very quickly or use different products that slow the drying time. With the corner of this very large brush, I'm adding some of the smaller clouds that's going to make it look like these very far away. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that there, put my brush in water, and move down the painting. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put the tree line in and move to my next brush, which is my filbert. I'm gonna get some green in there, and I'm gonna mix a little yellow with it. Makes it pretty bright, very, very bright. And to tone it down a bit so it looks more real, I'm going to add a little bit of red. Red is opposite on the color wheel from green, and opposites, they help to tone down colors. So that's gonna work for me. And then I'm gonna make it dark too over here by adding a little more blue. So I've got that green I mixed, then I just grabbed that green and added ultramarine, and I've got a dark green over here. And you can add quite a bit of blue if you'd like. And then you can also add a little red to that. So that's the dark, that's the medium. Okay, go ahead and put these trees in. And I'm just kind of scumbling around and letting that background show through. Don't forget those sides. Very close to the barn without going over it. So these look like they're right back behind there. There we go. And then I'm gonna go into the dark again. Remember, I start with my darks on every portion. So on the sky, I went dark, medium, light. Now I'm doing that with the trees. Bring these across. Don't worry about having a little of the orange show. It's okay, that's what we want. Okay, to the dark again. Now, yeah, layer, layer, layer. Let's get in some of that medium. Oh, look at your picture and look and see where the sun's hitting the trees. And mimic that right in front. Not covering all your darks. Have a little of that medium green in there. That's going to make it start looking very 3D. So these are very far away. Okay, now add a lot of yellow. I like to lighten with color rather than white. So grab that yellow, grab a little tiny bit of red, 
saturates the color. A little more red, a little more yellow. That's gonna be my next lightest color. I'm gonna go in again on these background trees. Now I don't want a lot of detail back here, otherwise it's gonna make them look closer than they are. So let's keep it a lot less detail here. So even less than I had before, I'm just gonna put a little bit of highlight on there. I'm barely touching the canvas. And because it's wet on wet, it mixes a little bit with what I've got going on there already. And it's giving me other values other hues. So it's changing the colors and how light and dark they are. And it's just fun to watch that happen. And knowing that happens, you can work with it. Alright, so you should have something that looks about like that. Okay, there's a very dark line there. And then, in your picture, it has a very light area there. So we're going to put that in. Grab a lot of yellow. Let's put that right in there. a little bit of almost straight yellow right there and right here and right up against the barn there right, so there's a little bit of lighter yellow we want to make sure this line is straight across so do a little correcting if you need to I'm just correcting this because it looked like it was going uphill a bit so we don't want that to happen we this is our horizon line so we want to make sure that goes straight across okay so back to this color here I've got a shadow that I'm putting in front of the barn. Trees shadowing it a bit there. So going into the greens that you have, just paint what you see. Still moving on down. And I'm doing all these, what I call, bridge colors. Bridge colors are colors that get you from the very darkest to the very lightest colors in your painting. So there's a lot of bridge colors in this grassy area. Again, I'm still not doing a lot of detail. Just getting the gist of it. So there's another area of trees here. So I'm going to go ahead and go into that dark again. Put those in here bush there. There's a little bit more stuff here. There's a large bush right here. And a large bush here. And just right off the right off the canvas here we're gonna have some large trees in there. Keeping it dark on the bottom here, you're creating a recessed area. So it looks like the light's hitting the bushes on the top there. There we go. There's a very dark tree here by the barn. So let's get that in. Wipe off my brush a little bit. I like to have a paper towel close to me so I can wipe that off real quick. It doesn't dirty my water so much if I wipe off my brush first and then put it in my dirty water. And I'm not even going to go into my clean water with this. I usually go into my dirty water to clean my brush out several times and then go into my clean water. But right now I'm just working with these greens, so I'm just going to be going into the dirty water. But I've got a nice dark green there. I'm going to go ahead and put that bush there. It needs a little more detail because he's a little closer to us. That wraps around into here. Right up at the barn, there's a little bit of a dark. There. There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and put some darks in here where I see some of those getting a little closer into the foreground area. Just going to throw in some of the darks I'll need for the recessed areas. There we go. The grasses that are going to be in the foreground. And there's a lot of green mixing. It's going to give you a lot of practice with green mixing. So now I'm making that medium again. So I've got my dark, medium, and light. I'm going to go in here, put that medium right in there. I'm using my whole arm here. Trying to paint loose. You can put your paint on pretty thick or you can do it thin. It's up to you. I like a little of that paint to show through. Okay. 
Then we'll put in a little bit of yellow for these other streaks here. It's gonna mix, mix with that orange and look pretty neat. That could be where there's a break in the cloud and a little sun's peeking through. I do think now with the other colors, we probably should make this a little brighter in there, especially there. This part right here, it seems to have a lot of orange in it, so I'm just going to repeat that orange that I've already got in the background, going into some red and yellow. Let's get that in there. And that's right in here. So I'm just going kind of diagonal on the brush and getting some of those grasses in there. Just kind of mixing it on my canvas. Back to green. Put some of the green in there. And a little bit more. I dipped it in there. We're working wet on wet here. Put some more grasses in here. You can hear my brush on the canvas. If you do not want it to be, you know, more dry brushed or scumbled like I'm doing, then just add a little bit of water and blend it in more of a wet on wet. So you choose as an artist how much paint you want to put on here a little paint you want to put. Some people like a lot. I kind of like to build up and as I get farther along in my painting I get more liberal with my paint. So the first layers are very thin and then sometimes I even grab that palette knife at the end and really lay it on thick. So that's just my style. You'll find your style, find what works for you. Just kind of highlighting some of these trees here. out my brush. Really light area right here. Right next to that. There we go. All right, now I'm going to move to a larger brush and do this foreground area. So I'll move to my three-quarter inch flat and go into some greens. Just want to keep it loose and so using a larger brush helps me do that. Remember to desaturate it a little bit by adding a little red. I'm just kind of giving it more of a grassy look by just pulling some of the color out and up. You could do this with a fan brush. I don't use a fan brush a lot, but for grasses it's very nice. I'll show you what that looks like. Here's what I have handy. They can be really handy for grasses. You just go into the color. You can use them on the side or you can use them on the broad end. So they just make a really neat grassy look. But that would be for towards the end, but I just want to make sure you know that that's something you could also use. All right, I got some grasses here. And here's where we're gonna layer a lot. Now, because this is all in the background here and it's far away, 
I'm going to make sure there's a lot more detail in the foreground. And some of that I have to make up because I don't have a lot of information here, but it's enough where I can kind of make up that there are some field grasses and those kinds of things. I'll show you how to do that. You can use another reference photo if you want. You can even put flowers here if you want, some wildflowers or something. But I'm just gonna go in here and the wind might be blowing, so I'll put them off to the side. And I'm just using the brush kind of on its side, diagonally, not losing all those darks. So we're up on maybe a knoll and we're looking into a valley area. All right, now I'm gonna go up in value a little bit by adding a little yellow. Now, a lot of people ask me, well, why don't I just add white? Well, you can, but what happens if you add white uh, all the time is it can end up making your paintings look flat. So I avoid that by waiting till the very end and adding white very minimally. Unless I absolutely have to, I don't add white. So I'm barely touching the canvas, trying to make it look very, very organic. I'm not doing them all straight in a row. They're just very random. And this is where layering is gonna be so important. Just keep on layering, going up in value. If you don't lose everything underneath, it'll look good. But if you cover everything underneath, then you'll have to go back and add your darks again. And it's difficult to go over the edge with this stroke, but just do the best you can if you like that edge painted. I'm just doing a little bit here. A little more water and a little more yellow. And getting that edge very nice and flat and using it on the side. This is just a little lighter. All right, lighter yet. And this is where I may need a little white. I'm gonna come in here. Some of those are catching the sun. Put a little water in there, get it to move a little bit. Very random. Organic stuff is very easy to paint because you can get away with a lot. As long as you make it very random. If you paint it too exact, it may not look real. down or up, whichever one gets you the best results. And there might be some other types of grasses in here as well, so I'll show you how to put some of those in there too. Add to the realism. Go right out in there. Let's go up in value a little bit more. Just for a few. Where the sun would be really hitting it. This is where it might be nice to also grab a palette knife and mix a color that you like, lightish yellow, and then also add that. And what I do is I get a little bit of a bead on my, I don't know if you can see that, but I get a little bit of a paint bead on the end of my palette knife and then I wipe that on there. And that gives me a neat look too. So if you don't like that look, no worries. But if you do, that's kind of a fun way to give it some more texture. Just get the angle that works for you. I'm just kind of in a round 
Well, you can add some more mark making and I'll come up and show you. It just makes it very painterly. that there for now and let's move into doing the barn. The barn's going to be the smallest paintbrush. I like the, the number three artist lot. It's just a small brush. So go ahead and go into a little bit of red. Almost straight red. A little bit of yellow in it. We're going to go ahead and do the, uh, the side of the barn. See that? I just added a little bit of yellow. Just a couple strokes. We can always brighten it up later. We need to. I'm just going down on that side of that barn. The downward strokes, you know, if you if you can see them at all, it'll look like barn wood. And then for the front, because the sun is coming in this way, this side is going to be lighter and the front is going to be darker. So you're going to want to add a little bit of the burnt sienna. Or if you see it differently, you could add a little bit of the ultramarine blue. So your choice, here's the ultramarine blue with red. It's kind of more of a purple color. And then here's the burnt sienna with red. So it's your choice how you see it. Both colors will shade the red to give you the darker color. So I'm just showing you varying colors. So however you see that barn. Just follow your pencil lines. And you could use a smaller brush if you'd like. Use what's comfortable to you. This is a very small area. You definitely need a small brush. Now I'll go back to my filbert brush and I'm going to go into straight white and I'm bracing myself here on the painting. It's already dry here. Might need two coats. I'm using the edge of my filbert to give me the edge roof line and then I'm using the side to fill in the full area. The reason I'm doing the roof now and not the tree first is so I can put that tree right over the top. And then on that edge, I'm going to just tap in the top of the door and the trim. Just barely tapping that in. tip is in there. And yeah, there's a white door or something here beyond the tree. Put that in there. And I'm going to make the windows white for now and then I'll make them dark in a moment. So for now I'm just going to put white here. There's a lot of different ways you could do this. This is just one way. So there's my windows. Go ahead and go into the dark a little bit with your white and that'll make the shaded white for the other side of the roof line. So it's not going to be quite white. So go ahead and make that in there. Even add a little bit of blue. So that's going to give you a shadow color. Very dark line. So if you mix a lot of blue, a little bit of red, a tad, a little tiny bit of yellow, you get kind of a warm black. So let's Use, I've got a little white in my brush too. We use that for the barn color.
my window here looks a little off. So I'm going to grab my small brush that we cleaned off and I'm going to go ahead and put the window a little bit farther over here. There we go. And then uh, put a little red on this other side to decrease the size. There we go. And I'll fix that up as soon as I dry it. Let's get that dry. Okay, so let's finish up our barn. We're in that detail stage, last stage of the painting, where we're doing our lightest lights and the tiny little details that just make a painting better. So let me go ahead and change a few things here. I've got my very small brush and I'm just changing a couple things here. I've got another window or door or something over there, so I'm just tapping that in. I do think that this roof needs to go up a bit, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. This looks a little taller in the picture to me. So I'm gonna add a little water. I'm gonna add clean water to my white so you don't accidentally change the color. And then there's quite a bit of shadow from the tree. So I'm going to go into that color we made for the shadow of the roof line. And I'm going to make a shadowy color for the side of the roof. There we go. The tree's just casting a shadow on that roof, so I'm going to mimic that. I'm gonna rinse that brush out again, blot it on a paper. I'm going to go in that darkest color again, maybe make it a little darker. There we go, red and ultramarine blue makes me a dark, dark color. And I'm going to head and I'm gonna add a little bit of a shadow line to the barn doors. I have to do this, but I like to make it look pretty real. There's also a dark color in here, and there, and here. Windows are almost always kind of a blue or a black color. So that's, I just filled in. There's another one. It didn't have to be perfect, it's pretty far away. So there's also a window here I missed. And then we need a little bit more of a trim. We go into whitish grayish. So a little bit of that color there. And I'm gonna put in this line as well. And there's also a line down here. And we also need a dark shadow line underneath here. So that can be a mixture of blue and red. There we go. It just gives it a little bit more 3D look. Bush over here, I'm going to put in a little tiny bush there. So a little bit of yellow, a little bit of green, a little bit of red. Sometimes to get grasses to stand out more, a little dark would help. So this is just more detailing. All right, now let's go ahead and put this tree in. Just a little bit of ultramarine blue with red. Let you know how to do that. Get it to move around a little more. You just moisten it up a little bit with a little bit of water. There's a branch that goes this way. And you can use a smaller brush if you'd like. I'm not going to put every branch in here, just the idea that there's a branch there. There's another branch over here. Branch kind of goes off to the side there. It's the idea that there's a lot of branches on there. There'd be one there too. You don't need all of them. And then take your filbert brush, mix it into some a bit of dark green to start with. Remember, we always start with the darks. Put light in there. Blue. Oh, okay, that's a nice dark. So let's go ahead and put that tree in there. Kind of messy. I'm 
I'm not going to layer a lot. Add some yellow, a little lighter, make sure to add just a little bit of red. I'll just give it more realism. You can use them full strength, but I like to just tone them down a bit with the opposite on the color wheel. It works for all your colors. So if you're using purple and you want to tone it down a bit, just go opposite the color wheel and use yellow. All right, now I'm going to go over with the highlights. Do not cover all your darks, but just add where the light might be hitting this tree. Just gotta scumble it in. I made mine pretty full compared to the picture. You can make it more open if you want. And then a little more yellow yet, and maybe a little white. Just for the lightest values. I'll test that on there a little bit first. And I'm just tapping on a few lighter values. I don't want to get carried away. It's just where the sun might be catching that tree. Just make sure you're around them, it's not a polka dotted tree. A little more realism, let's get a little darker color in there. I just want to make a really dark color because I want to make a shadow on the one side of the tree. This is another good place for if you like it to be more random or organic looking. Again, get that little bead on your palette knife, and that's another way you can kind of scrape in some branches. Don't need a lot. They're not going to be completely connected. So consider that. You could also use a smaller brush. And once you've got them all on there, then you can just cover them. And a little more white. And one more highlight here. There we go. The way it's mixing with all those other colors. There you go, there's your tree. Now let me fix the windows up a bit. So I'm gonna go rinse again with my dark color here. There's a little bit of white showing up on this window here. And now I'm just cleaning up a little bit. There is a little bit of a dark line here too. I'm a shadow line, so I'm going to go into some dark and just make this shadow line right here. A little bit of that going on here too. Plus that cleans up that white line a bit too. go. These little details. I do think it just needs a little bit more of a point up here. And then there's a little bit of that antenna or something on the bar. So just go into a little dark color. On the very tip of your brush, just flick up and you should get that line. There. There's also another one over here. Also, I'm seeing now, being pretty particular, you don't need to add all this detail. This is just for those who do like detail. There's a little bit of a line there too. And this one seems a little brighter, so I'll put that in there a little brighter. This one too. I see now I have two more windows. I didn't really put those in. I guess I could put these two in too. So I'll put those in too. I put them a little closer together. I'm also going to add just a little darker green. Just going to add a little darker green here. I 
just when you have those strong darks and lights, it really, really gives it that 3D look. Now you can add some more colors to the sky. You can add lighter light to your clouds because as acrylics dry, they dry darker. So if you want to add more white to your clouds, you can do that. It'll just make them poofier looking. See like that? And then mix as much as you want or little as you want. There's a lot of things you can still do to this. I'll leave it up to you how much detail you want. But this is pretty much done, and this is a um, pretty straightforward landscape. I tried to simplify it a little bit from the photo, but you can definitely put more detail in if you'd like. I'm just adding more detail. This is the very end stage. You got it. Maybe set it aside for a couple hours and look at it again, or take a picture of it and look at it in your viewfinder or your monitor, and that might help you decide whether you need to do any more. So I'm just going to be adding a little bit lighter grasses to the front here. And I think I might add some white flowers too. You want to make sure those sides are all done up, so this is a good time to check those. add flowers. I'm just going to uh, make a mixture of white on a clean palette and I'm going to mix in quite a bit of water with it. I want it too soupy but just enough that I can get it to move around a little bit more. And what you can do is you can take the back of your brush if you want and then just randomly add some flowers. Poke them with your finger and move them around a little bit and get some flowers. You can add different colors too. You don't have to have just white. But I'll show you what it looks like with purple as well. So you choose what you want to do. And then if you don't like that look, you can always use the corner of your brush so they're not so perfect. You can use your smaller brush too, so just use what works for you, what you like. I don't mind getting messy. If you don't like the paint getting on your hands, you could wear gloves for this, but I feel like I have more control if I don't have gloves on. So that's what it looks like with flowers. You could add more or less, depending on how much, how much you like. The other thing too you could do, you use a toothbrush, I like this one with the bristles that are a little longer on the end. If you use that in a uh, dark color, we could make a purple. Okay, I'm going to try it on a paper plate first to see which way it's going to get going there. It's going to go that way. So I'm going to go ahead and flick it that way on my painting. And wherever you don't want it, you can just wipe off afterwards. Or you can cover some areas so you don't too much. I have a moistened towel. I'm just gonna wipe off a few areas that just didn't want too much better up here in the sky. So I'm gonna wipe that off. The sky's pretty much dry, so this isn't a problem. But everywhere else, I think this better looks good. There we go. If you do it right away, you should be fine. Didn't want too much on the barn either. There we go. There's a couple other places too. I think it just got a little weird looking. So I'm just going to kind of correct that. There we go. You can add a little more of that if you want. Some bigger spots. 
You can do those any color you want. You could do them green, dark green. This blue kind of purple mixture looks pretty good. Just adds to the field look. And then if you want to add some lavender flowers. I don't know my flowers that well, but I know there's a lot of wild ones that grow on the side of the road. They're just so pretty, so let's try to make some of that happen. So let me show you that. just like to be able to give you options. So take in a little bit of blue and a little bit of red and mix that all up. Just using another palette so I can show you the colors. Get in some white. There we go. That'll help you see the color better. A little more blue. There we go. And you've got these beautiful lavenders showing up. So I've got a dark, medium, and a light here. A little more blue to this one. So those colors can all be added. Remember, for everything that you do, you want a dark, a medium, and a light. So you can do your values here. And then you're having a little more red and blue. A little more blue in here. That's a nice purple there. Okay, so we've got a dark, medium, and a light. So I'll go ahead and with the dark, I'll just add some flowers here. Just tap them on. Very random. These might be more of the clumps. Kind of evenly spaced, so let me put a few more over here. Don't want to be too even about it. Let's wash off that brush. I can keep my color pure. Blot it on my towel. My towel here. Now let's go into the medium color. Tap in that one. We don't want every detail, but we just want to give the idea that there's flowers close up and there's a barn far away. And then let's go ahead and wipe on a paper towel. And then we'll go ahead and see what we can do here with the light. And then just light those up. Now the other thing you could do, again I'm just trying to give you options, you could stop here, you'd be done. If you want to, you can add a different hue also to awesome. these. Because they do come in purple, but they also come in pink. If you have a magenta in your set of paints, you could use that. This one doesn't come with a magenta, but we could mix a pink with just red and white. and Put that on and I'll show you that. One more, and we'll call it done. Unless you want to put cows in it. <laughs> There's so many things you can do in painting, it's so fun. So let's make a pink, and then you could add that in there. So it's entirely up to you. You stop when you feel like it's the way you want it. A lot of times, too, I'll add birds. A little brush here. If you make a very, very dark color with your red and blue, kind of a dark purple. Water it down quite a bit. And you just make a little M on your canvas and that should look like a bird. Birds just give the painting more life. So let's put a few birds in here, just straight up off the canvas. If you wanna just go in and uh, draw, make sure this is at a very nice point. And just have a moist towel handy. Just in case you don't like it, you can just wipe it off real quick and try it again. So let's just go up here. Bird there. Maybe a bigger one right here. Maybe over here. Get one going a little closer to us. This bird's flying around. Do one closer to the barn. Not sure I like that one, so I'm just gonna wipe that one off real quick. And make sure it's completely dry before you do it again. And I like to do an uneven number of birds. Let's see this? There we go. Maybe one up in here. So there's your birds. I need to add the dark to these windows. I forgot that part. I hope you enjoyed this project. Meet me back here for the next Tuesday tutorial. Until then, happy painting!